believe there's something in the air today that makes us ready for a leap in the field of management, in the field of organizations. For the last three years, I've been doing in-depth research into truly pioneering organizations that have been you know, founded by people, or at some point, you know, had a new CEO who had a very deep conviction that the current way to think about management, the current way to run organizations, um, is outdated. You know, wasn't working for them. And they did something quite extravagant, which is that they decided to pretty much throw out everything we're being told in business school about the way we should run organizations, and then went on a mad journey of innovation, you know, to try to replace it with something that they hoped would be more powerful, more soulful, more purposeful. And what got me really excited when I started this research is to discover that even though they didn't know of each other, they worked independently, what they ended up with was often remarkably similar even though they worked in very different industries, very different geographies, and also really meant a leap in terms of management. How do organizations like Beurtzorg and, and some others um, that operate from this next level, you know, how, do they, how do they work from the inside? Well, according to my research, there are three fundamental breakthroughs as compared to you know, today's management. And the first one is self-management. In Birchorg, with 9,000 people, there isn't a single manager. There are no levels of hierarchy. There's no pyramid. And there are other organizations of, you know, a few hundred, a few thousand people that operate entirely without a traditional boss-subordinate relationship. What they've done is that they've replaced all of that with, you know, much more powerful systems of distributed authority. You know, of collective intelligence. And to do that, they have had to not only get rid of stuff, but then they had to reinvent other stuff. Right? It's not just getting rid of hierarchy. So they've had to pretty much redefine you know, all of the basic building blocks of management. You know, they had to reinvent the you know, decision-making mechanisms. They've had to deal with everyday questions that every organization deals with. Like, you know, how do we do when somebody is underperforming? What happens? You know, who makes how much money at the end of the year? It's always you know, a tricky question. And so they've had to adapt or basically upgrade these systems for systems of distributive authority. And what happens is extraordinary because instead of having just a few powerful people at the top, suddenly everyone in the organization is powerful. And that just, you know, changes everything. Now, second breakthrough has to do with wholeness. In today's organizations, we're pushed to show up with a very narrow part of ourselves to show up with wearing a professional mask. And sometimes we've worn it for so long that we don't even realize that we're wearing that mask. And we all have a rational and intuitive and emotional spiritual side. And the rational, you know, that's great. Facts and figures in organizations, that's great. Intuitive and, you know, emotional, I mean, no emotions in organizations, please. And spirit, you know, spirit, right? And we end up... Uh, we end up with this. And what some of the organizations I researched have understood at a very profound level is that if so many organizations today feel somewhat lifeless, it's become because we bring so little life into the organization. And so they've put in place a great number again of practices, often very beautiful, soulful practices that help us open up that window and dare to drop the mask and show up in the full glory of our humanity. And there's enormous energy, enormous creativity that gets freed when we finally drop the mask. You know, there's something in us that is just incredibly joyful and grateful when we can be ourselves. And these organizations are very mindful and conscious about that. And the third breakthrough is what I call evolutionary purpose. You know, the whole management paradigm today is predicated upon the notion of predict and control, right? The smartest people in organizations, the one at the top, you know, need to predict the future, right? To have a very clever strategy. 
And then we need to control everything that happens in the organization to make sure that that's where we're going, right? And we have a whole arsenal of management tools to control that, right? We have strategic planning, and we have midterm planning, and we have yearly budget cycles, and we have balanced scorecards, and KPIs, and targets, and objectives, and incentives, you know, predicting control. And what leaders of some of these organizations, like Joseph de Bloch, say is, you know, predicting control might have made sense, but the world has become way too complex. And actually, we don't need to predict and control. We can do something that is much simpler and yet much more powerful, which is sense and respond. Which is, instead of predicting where the organization wants to go, let's trust that the organization is a living organism, that the organization has a sense of direction of its own, has a creative genius of its own, has something it's called to manifest in the world. And so from a much more humble place, let us all listen where this organization is wanting to go, and then let's dance with it to get there. Let's, you know, let's constantly sense and respond to where it wants to go. The next time you're frustrated at work because you sit in endless meetings, or you're tired of the politics, or the infighting, or the bureaucracy, or whatever it is, um, you remember, it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. You know, there, there are pioneers out there who you know, show us it's possible to run organizations in ways that are really radically more powerful, soulful, and purposeful than what we do today. <laughs>